Good morning, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve's 2% inflation target. Now, this 2% inflation target is pretty much the view of 99% of everybody out there, whether it's a news interview that you are watching or an article that you are reading or even listening to the Federal Reserve themselves. They all talk about a 2% inflation target, but that is not the case. The Federal Reserve is now going for a 2% average inflation rate over time. See, typically the Federal Reserve would conduct themselves in a way that would say if inflation was running above 2%, they would try to make the financial conditions tighter, you know, stiffer credit rating, stuff like that in order to bring the inflation back in line with their 2% target. If it was running under 2%, again, they would adjust monetary policy to make it more accommodative to bring it in line with their target. So this is the way, again, like 99% of the people see it. But they changed. They changed to an average inflation rate over time. And nobody saw it. See, this is the illusionary truth effect. This is gaslighting. This is, this is done at its finest level. Propaganda like you wouldn't believe. Because the average inflation rate is so much different than inflation targeting, but nobody realized that the Fed had changed that view. Listen to this. This is coming from Jerome Powell's speech given August 27th of 2020. This is how far back it goes. See, once it was stated, it was almost completely gone silent as far as the shift into average. Like, how, when was the last time you heard anybody say they're going for an average inflation rate over time? You don't, right? Now, listen to this. We also have made an important change with regard to the price stability side of our mandate. Our long-run goal continues to be an inflation rate of 2%. Our statement emphasizes that our actions to achieve both sides of our dual mandate will be most effective if long-run, or I'm sorry, long-term inflation expectations remain well anchored at 2%. However, if inflation runs below 2% following economic downturns, but never moves above 2% even when the economy is strong, then over time, inflation will average less than 2%, right? never achieving their goal. Households and businesses will come to expect this result, meaning that inflation expectations would tend to move below our inflation goal and pull realized inflation down. To prevent this outcome and the adverse dynamics that could ensue, our new statement indicates that we will seek to achieve inflation that averages 2% over time. Therefore, following periods when inflation has been running below 2%, appropriate monetary policy would likely aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time. This is important. This is the key to it right here. In seeking to achieve inflation that averages 2% over time, we are not tying ourselves to a particular mathematical formula that defines the average. Isn't that convenient? All right? They have no mathematical formula to determine what this average inflation rate over time is. So five years, 10 years, who knows? They don't give us the timeline. They don't even give us a mathematical formula to figure it out. It kind of becomes arbitrary to the Fed if you, you know, when you think about it like that. Thus, our approach could be viewed, viewed as a flexible form of average inflation targeting. Our decision about appropriate monetary policy will continue to reflect a broad array of considerations and will not be dictated by any formula. Right? This is what drives me nuts about this. It's like, okay, so now what? See, before we knew, we knew exactly what it was. It was a target. We could tell you that if you went above the target, you would adjust monetary policy to come in line with the target again. But now they're saying, no, it's average inflation rate over time, and we don't really have any mathematical, for mathematical formula to figure out what this average inflation rate over time is. You see how sneaky this is? All right. Of course, if excessive inflationary pressures were to build or inflation expectations were to ratchet above levels consistent with our goal, we would not hesitate to act. Okay, so what is the goal again? It's 2% in average inflation rate over time that you don't have any mathematical formula to give us so that we can figure it out for ourselves. And so therefore, if it does happen to ratchet up above levels consistent with your goal, you would not act hesitate to act. Like, well... Mm, this is frustrating, isn't it? So how is it 
that all these people out there on the news and all the economists who are talking about what the Federal Reserve is going to be doing going into the future with their interest rates because the inflation rate has achieved their 2% goal or their 2% target, all these economists are saying this, and yet the Federal Reserve is saying that it's going to be an average inflation rate over time, and guess what? We don't really have like a formula for you to figure that out. So it's not the 2% target, like everybody is saying. It's 2% average inflation. So then I came across this, and I'm leaving links down in the description to these things, right? And I came across this. This is coming out of the Richmond Fed talking about long-run and average inflation. And this is what they have to say in this particular economic letter. And it says, a significant date is September 2020, when the FOMC revised its statement on long-run goals on monetary policy strategy. In this update, the FOMC adopted a flexible average inflation target. This is important. Seeking to achieve inflation that averages 2% over time. And stated that following periods when inflation has been running persistently below 2%, appropriate monetary policy will likely to aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time. Just like Jerome was saying. Um, since the revised statement was released, headline PCE inflation has run at a pace of 5% per year and core inflation has run at a pace of 4.4% per year on average. Now, this is important. This is the most important part right here. Notably, in its update, the FOMC did not define the window of time uh, over which it would be looking back to assess progress towards its goal, right? No mathematical formula for it. He just admitted it again right here. By, but this is important right here. By looking back far enough, it is possible to identify starting dates where average inflation through present day. So if you go back far enough, you look back there far enough, and then you start doing the average all the way up to today, all right, um, through present day, identify that the average inflation through the present day has come in an exact at target. For example, when considering inflation from October of 2008 through August of 2023, headline PCE inflation averaged about 2% per year on average, right on target. Think about that for just a minute. They just admitted, didn't admit, just told us exactly how they are figuring out the 2% average inflation rate over time. Did you catch it? Let me, let me say it again here. All right? By looking back far enough, right? if you go back and look back far enough, to, uh, it is possible to identify starting dates where the average inflation rate through the present day have come in exactly on target. For example, if you go back to October of 2008 and through August of 2023, headline PCE inflation averaged about 2% on average right on target. So for the course of 15 years, if we go back 15 years right now, where inflation stands and we take the average, not five years back, because that ain't enough, 10 years back isn't enough, 12, nope, 15 years. If we go back 15 years, boom, we find the average inflation rate of 2%. So now... The Federal Reserve doesn't look at what inflation is today. They're looking at what the average inflation rate is over time. And right now, the 2% average inflation rate is 15 years back. Well, it's probably different because this was written a while ago and they were talking about August of 2023. But you guys know what I'm talking about as far as the example goes. So now instead of looking at it like what inflation is going to be as far as the target, they're looking back in time to say, hey, it took 15 years to go back in time to find a 2% average inflation rate. If inflation is running extra hot, extra high, that timeline begins to shrink. You see? Because the now the average going back considering the extra hot inflation is now only going back, say, 12 years or 10 years or 8 years. See, this is how the Federal Reserve is now looking at inflation or average inflation rate over time. And so when it comes to adjusting monetary policy, it's really how far back does it have to look in order to find the 2% average inflation rate? Is it 15 years back? Well, maybe we need to 
keep inflation running hot in order to bring that inflation 2% average inflation rate closer up to, say, 10 years or maybe eight years. Right? You, you see where I'm getting at? The Federal Reserve has totally changed the way that they are viewing inflation. Average inflation rate over time. And now... It's looking back at where inflation was comparatively to where it is today in order to achieve that 2% average over time. See, this is why everybody is misunderstanding it. They think that the Federal Reserve is going for a target. The target isn't there anymore. The target is like someplace else. Like they don't even like the target is just like, well, the target is how far back was it? 15 years? Like we need to make that more like 10 years. Keep inflation running high until we can make that average 10 years back or eight years back. It, See where I'm getting at? I'm going to leave links down in the description to this video. If you could find anybody else who has a better understanding of how average inflation rate is going to be incorporated into the monetary policy strategy, I would love to hear it. Because most people are looking at it as a 2% target, like they are trying to achieve that in the future, and that is completely inaccurate. Take a look at those links and let me know what you think about that. All right, Uneducated economists, you let me know.